Hi, everybody. Dr. Howe here. Uh, I want to take a little bit of time to go over the next project, Project 3, with you. Um, so please watch this video in its entirety, and um, I will be able to answer any questions that you might have when we meet next, okay? So uh, what um, we're gearing up for is Project 3, which is this source analysis essay, okay? The goals of this project are, at its broadest, for you to become a student mini expert on uh, a narrowed topic that you've developed, okay? You're gonna be doing this by researching and then writing an essay that just summarizes and analyzes and then connects at least three high quality popular sources on some topic that's related to our class readings that you've sort of narrowed in focus and scope. And I'll talk to you a little bit about what that means in this presentation. Um, you can use our essays, the ones that we've read in this class, as a starting point for idea generation, uh, but your job will be to find at least three additional sources uh, for this project. Now, your sources have a, a bit of restriction to them, okay? The one major restriction is that they cannot be scholarly journal articles. Okay, that's important. They cannot be scholarly journal articles, okay? Uh, your sources can be magazine essays, they can be news investigations, they can be um, investigative videos, they can be newspaper articles, they can be nonprofit reports, government reports, even book chapters, okay? Um, but they cannot be scholarly journal articles. Okay? So how do you narrow your topic? Uh, this is probably one of the most important issues that you're gonna encounter. Uh, for this related to this project. Um, you're going to be needing to narrow your topic quite a bit. So let's say that you want to research Black Lives Matter. Okay, That's a fantastic broad topic, but it is way too broad for this project. Okay, um, You're going to need to narrow it so that you can actually become a mini expert at the first year student level. Okay, If you wanted to just write about Black Lives Matter, you would probably end up writing a book or three books, okay? <laughs> and we are not doing that in this class. Um, so I've given you a list here of some um, topics that are way too broad, um, and then some more narrowed topics, okay? So for instance, Black Lives Matter, way too broad, but the organizational structure of Black Lives Matter is a little bit more narrow, okay? Um, the political work of Black Lives Matter, like what is, how does Black Lives Matter intersect with the you know, US political economy, right? That would be an interesting narrowed topic. Um, police brutality, far too broad, okay? Uh, but you could look at the militarization of the police force or connections between militarization and police brutality, right? Those would be two different topics, but both narrowed, okay? Um, you, you might be interested in writing on COVID-19, but COVID-19 in and of itself is way too broad. Okay. Um, you could narrow that topic to look specifically at, say, age gaps and susceptibility to COVID-19, right? Um, you could narrow this and look at even further and look at the um, work of COVID-19 in nursing homes or palliative care units, right? Uh, you might be interested in writing about the spread of COVID-19. That too, a little bit less narrow, uh, sorry, a little bit less broad, but still too broad for this project, okay? But you could narrow it by looking at something like uh, the efficacy of social distancing in prevented COVID, COVID spread um, on college campuses, okay? So that would be a much more narrowed topic. And you could even, um, you know, narrow that further by thinking about large research institutions, large public research institutions with, you know, 35,000 people or more, um, or, you know, mid-size or small um, institutions, private institutions, and so on, okay? So narrowing your topic. Uh, how do you do that, right? Well, here are some questions to ask yourself. And remember when I said, use the readings that we've already done as places to sort of inspire you, okay? Things to kind of inspire you. Ask questions that are related to those readings. What aspects of the reading that I've already done really intrigued me or, you know, what surprised me? Um, what information or ideas do I wanna learn more about? Uh, but the key here is to be concrete and specific in answering those questions. So I promise you, okay, I absolutely promise you that you'll have an easier time with all future research <laughs> if you make concreteness a focus of your, um, your questions, okay? That's why I've been trying to emphasize in your annotations, um, you know, more nuanced, more complex, more concrete uh, responses and annotations, okay? 
You can also narrow your topic by beginning to develop a research question that can help guide your writing, okay? Uh, your research question should flesh out your narrow topic and begin to suggest a thesis. You could imagine answering one of these questions with a thesis, okay? At this point for this project, you're not gonna have a thesis, okay? You're gonna have a narrowed topic, but you're not gonna have an argument, okay? You're not making an argument about uh, your material. That's for later, okay? Right now, we're just informing ourselves, okay? Uh, so these are some ways, some kinds of research questions, okay? You might think about things like, uh, like this. Uh, given the local and state laws in Virginia, how difficult is it to prosecute or convict law enforcement officers who use too much force? Or um, what kind of impact do civilian video recordings and body cam footage actually have in holding the police accountable? Um, what are the dem important demographics when we think of essential workers and how might that impact susceptibility to COVID-19? Uh, you could ask a research question uh, that is related to uh, the impact of COVID-19 in, say, palliative care units or nursing homes, right, if that was something that interested you. So what are you trying to answer? What do you want to figure out? What do you want to get information about, okay? How do you find sources? Um, another great question, and we will be doing some of this in class, okay? Uh, we'll have one period of class uh, where we will uh, work with the general internet, just sort of Google, right? Um, and then we'll have another section of class, another period of class where uh, we are looking through library databases, okay? Um, reading and browsing can also help you identify and narrow your topic. So research will actually help you be, become better at research and help you ask better questions, okay? Find more appropriate materials. So it's a very iterative process, but we're gonna be working with both the general internet, AKA Google, um, and library databases, okay? Uh, once you've identified your narrow topic, then you're gonna to wanna to start doing more deliberate searches using keywords from something like your narrowed research statement or your research question, okay? Um, now your sources, are going to be you are going to be drawn from general internet um, and general library databases, uh, and the challenge here is finding appropriate materials. Okay, that's the big challenge of this assignment. Um, your sources need to be aimed at an educated audience, but not expert. They should not be biologists with thirty years experience under their belt, right? Um, or, uh, you know, um, philosophers who have spent their whole entire career, you know, working on the ethical theory, okay? <laughs> um, your sources should be aimed at an educated but not expert audience, an educated general audience, okay? Just like the stuff we've been reading for this class, right? Uh, they have to offer educated, meaty content that has been developed with research, right? That can be broadly understood for that general but educated audience, okay? Uh, and they have to offer substantive insight into your narrowed topic so that it helps you address the different parts of your narrowed topic. How do you find sources? Um, you are going to be, let me just make sure that I'm on the right. I think I'm, I skipped a slide here. Yeah, I didn't skip a slide. I'm on the right slide. Okay, uh, so how do you find sources sort of part two, right? Um, if you're working, here's a good example, right? If you're working on the possible connections between militarization and police brutality, then you might come up with a research question that looks something like this. What is the impact of the increasing militarization of local and state police forces on police practice, especially surrounding vigorous policing, violence, and or brutality towards civilians, okay? Maybe that's my research question. I've bolded the keywords here. Okay, militarization, police practice, vigorous policing, violence, brutality, civilians. Okay, those are the keywords. So I'm gonna be looking for articles of the length that you've read in class, okay? Uh, maybe a little bit longer, but definitely not shorter. Uh, you're gonna be looking for articles from reliable, reputable, respected, the three R's, right? Long-standing sources. So no fly-by-night rando website that Zom Joe has just sort of slapped up on the web. Um, you want to be very careful about this, okay? You're, and part of the way that you can be careful about it is by looking at the publishing venue, doing a little bit of digging around the internet about that publishing venue. What do we know about the New Yorker? What do we know about Vox? What do we know about the Brookings Institute? And so on, okay? Um, if they've only been around for a year, right, and uh, they're funded by, you know, one person uh, and they don't have a board of, you know, advisors, well, then that's probably not a good source, okay? Um, 
you also want to look for well reasoned and supported articles with research research articles support supported with research that are, you know, of a fairly recent date. Okay. Um, and then probably one of the most important things is that you want to make sure that your articles aren't fake news. Okay. Uh, if they come from reliable, reputable, long standing sources, they probably aren't. Okay. But you also want to make sure they're not propagandistic essays or propagandistic pieces of, of material that are, you know, geared toward eliciting an emotional charge. Okay. You want to sort of be wary of that. And that's why rhetorical analysis can be uh, important and effective. Okay. Any um, articles that are sort of uh, working to make you angry about something in a, in like an unreasoning way. Okay. If they're pushing your buttons, right. To try to get you to, um, you know, to just reject out of hand, right. An idea. Um, look for, uh, we'll talk a lot about this in class, right. But, you know, think about the language and the word choice that's being, that's being employed. Um, over the top um, superlatives, right. Uh, really sort of um, uh, excessive language um, can be a sign of warning, okay? Uh, and you wanna be sure finally that the articles are related to your narrow topic, maybe even taking different perspectives on your narrow topic. So I wanna take a little bit of time just to kind of talk about that. Um, how do you find related essays? You wanna be sure that your articles are related to not just your narrow topic, but maybe that they take different perspectives on that narrow topic so that you can be informed, okay? So if my topic is the impact of militarization on police training and the impact of, and that on the practice of policing, then I might wanna find, you know, articles like this. Maybe an article that takes a skeptical view of the relationship. Maybe somebody is arguing that there isn't really uh, much of a relationship between militarization and um, the, the practice of policing, okay? Um, I might want to find an article that, that is critical of that relationship that says, yes, there is a connection and it's not really a good one and here's why, right? Uh, I might want to find an article that, you know, gives a historical perspective that looks at the history of militarization in the police force. Um, I might want to try to find an article that looks at the economic issues that are associated with police militarization. How, in fact, are they becoming militarized? Where is that all coming from? Where's the money coming from, right? <laughs> How does that whole thing work? Um, I might want to find an article that looks at the issue from a police person's perspective um, or from an activist's perspective. But remember, uh, they need to be meaty, substantive, right? Researched and reasoned, not propagandistic, et cetera, okay? Uh, and all of these topics, these aspects of your topic will, will come into focus as you become your, a mini expert, okay? When you write the essay, uh, these are the things that I'm gonna be looking for, okay? Your essay should be four pages, Okay. It can go over four pages, uh, but it really should not be less than four pages. It's doable in less than four pages, but it's not likely that it will be complete okay, at less than four pages. Um, there is variation in the page number because uh, you have the option of doing one or two paragraphs for each of your sources. Um, and I'll talk a little bit about that. So you could have a paper that has, you know, three paragraphs, one for each of your sources, or you could have a, a paper that has six paragraphs as body paragraphs, two for each of your sources. And that, of course, will, um, you know, uh, change the overall length of your essay. Dr pretty dramatically, it could. So you're going to have a four-page essay, four-ish page essay, uh, that has the following things in it, okay? You're going to have an introduction that's going to identify your narrow topic and briefly set up your three sources, okay? There is a full assignment and rubric available on Canvas, so please do read that through. Um, these are the, sort of the, the highlights, right? Uh, you're going to have somewhere in your essay, probably at the beginning, a description of your research process. It would be illogical for you to talk about your research process after you've discussed your research, right? So foreground that. Um, and this should be concrete, right? Not in general, I did some Google searches or I used this database in the library, um, in the library. but uh, what kinds of search terms did you use? What worked and what didn't? How did you change your plan based on your initial searches? Did you narrow your topic? Did you have to make it a little broader, right? Um, so a bit of a description of your research process. Uh, you're going to want to have then a collection of body paragraphs. And this collection of body paragraphs can be, like I said, one paragraph for each source or two paragraphs for each source. But in your body paragraphs for each source, you're going to summarize the main argument of each of your source sources, and you're going to explain and discuss the rhetorical context of each of your sources. Okay, so you could do that in one paragraph. If you're really good at condensing your summary, you could also do that in two paragraphs, and that will change the length of your essay. 
time. And uh, you're going to want to have a conclusion that draws connections between your sources. Um, and then somewhere, either in your intro or your conclusion, you want to have a brief statement or discussion of your interests in the subject, right? What is it that interests you about this topic? And then finally, a works cited page with an entry for each of your sources. Okay. So it's pretty straightforward. Um, you're doing research, then you're going to be writing about the research that you find in an objective way. You're going to be summarizing it and analyzing its, an, its rhetorical context. And then you're going to be framing that research report right, with an introduction and a conclusion. Evaluation for this project is going to be a little bit different than what you might have encountered in other, um, in other assignments. Uh, this project is going to be evaluated largely according to two components, okay, and that's source-based. It's about the quality of your sources and the accuracy of your summary and rhetorical analysis, okay? Those are really the two key things that will cover about 80% or so of uh, the grade for this assignment. The rest of it will be um, uh, focusing on introduction and conclusion and then writing, okay? Style and format, that sort of thing. Okay? You can find the whole entire rubric uh, on Canvas in the source analysis essay assignment. Okay? Uh, it's going to be due November 6th. The full essay will be due November 6th to Canvas, but we'll have a multitude of smaller projects that are sort of due along the way that help you sort of build up to that final essay. So the first thing we're going to do is spend some time finding a, a bunch, right, 10 to 15 possible sources, okay, um, and then we're going to narrow that down to a handful of the best sources that you think are most related and the highest quality sources for our purposes. Uh, then you're going to do a series of annotations. That's the summary and rhetorical analysis portion for each of your sources. Uh, and there will be um, a group Zoom um, a meeting there where we'll cancel class and I'll, I'll meet with you in small groups to talk about the materials that you found uh, and give you feedback on that and give you an opportunity to talk with your peers about what you found. Uh, and then there will be a, a full draft full draft due on November 3rd and then again the revised essay due uh, on November 6th. Okay, um, so those are the important due dates and that is the uh, next project. Do make sure that you look at the whole assignment and rubric on Canvas um, because that's where you're going to be submitting it. Okay, I will also ask that everybody submit PDFs of the actual research that you've done, the essays themselves that you've chosen. Uh, so um, just keep that in mind as you are working on this project, okay? Let me know if you have any questions and um, I will see you next class.